Thanks for joining our special live coverage of South Korea's 29th cabinet meeting of the year. I'm Kim Dami in Seoul. In a moment, President Yoon suk yeol will be presiding over today's meeting. Topics expected at the session include the recent fire at a lithium battery plant in Hwasong City. To remind you, a week ago on Monday, 23 people were killed in the blaze that broke out after a series of explosions. Now, the dead were mostly foreigners, including 17 from China, as well as five Koreans. President Yoon is also expected to address the formation of the 22nd National Assembly, which came after a month of wrangling. Last Thursday, the rival parties finally decided on how to run the 22nd National Assembly for the next two years. Another topic that could be mentioned is South Korea's ranking in IMD's 2024 World Competitiveness. Last week, South Korea placed 20th overall out of 67 countries that were assessed in this year's ranking. Now, that's the highest ever for South Korea, and it's also up eight places compared to last year when the country came in at 28th. The country's chronically low birth rates could also be agenda as well. Now, to remind you, South Korea has the lowest birth rate in the world, the figure dropping to 0.72 last year. Year. President Yoon suk in fact, last month declared a national emergency for this daunting situation and vowed to make every effort to handle the issue. The latest effort is the launch of a command center yesterday. The center will be run at the deputy prime minister level. That command center will also be in charge of strategies related to the aging population. Again, we are still waiting for South Korea's 29th cabinet meeting of the year to begin. One of the topics that President Yoon could bring is the recent fire that broke out at a lithium battery plant over in Hwasong City. Last Monday, the fire led to the deaths of 23 people. The blaze broke out after a series of explosions, and the dead were mostly foreigners, uh, 17 from China, but there were also Koreans, five Koreans. The topics expected to be uh, brought up today by President Yoon suk yeol at the 22nd National Assembly uh, will be the 22nd National mm, Assembly nice. being uh, formated. Now, the meeting is about to begin. We'll come back afterwards. Last night, in downtown Seoul, a car went into a pedestrian zone and we lost nine people and six people were injured. This is a very sad accident. And last week, we had a blaze in the lithium battery factory in Hwasong. I would like to express my deepest condolences to the victims and their bereaved families at the date of the accident, I went to the site and I took stock of what has been the emergency measures being taken and I felt very bad. The new industries of Korea has been growing very fast and that is why the situation on the field has changed a lot and therefore the, our awareness of the safety is not up to the level. So, like battery industries where many chemicals are being used, we cannot put out the fire using the existing measures. So, with this accident, I hope that this would become a good opportunity for us to come up with befitting measures. In particular, we have to use accident as this opportunity and must thoroughly investigate the types and causes of fires in these industries and establish more scientific safety measures so that we can protect the lives and safety of our people. Ministry of Interior and Safety 
employment and labor and science and ICT, the related ministries should strengthen their collaboration for this purpose. Taking this accident as an opportunity to look into the battery safety issues, Ba uh, we would have to do this in earnest. Batteries are used not only in industrial fields, but also in other settings. So the Ministry of Public Administration and Safety should take the lead and thoroughly inspect the status of battery safety from, the, from ground zero. Last Thursday, the 22nd National Assembly was completed for the first half now, with the new assembly, new national assembly, we have mountainous challenges, national challenges ahead of us to resolve. Geopolitical and geoeconomic conflicts are occurring all over the world, and global poly crises are amplifying, including supply chain fragmentation. Fortunately, our economy is on the road to recovery, but this uncertainty around the world and the global economy continues. The problem of low birth rate and aging population is an imminent task of em national emergency. Social polarization and conflicts between classes and generations are emerging as very serious problems that threaten the very existence of the Republic of Korea. And therefore, we must muster, muster our strengths from throughout the society and our capabilities to overcome such challenges. The goal of state affairs and politics should be one. It is to solve the difficulties of the people's livelihoods and make people happier. I believe the goals are no different for the government and for the National Assembly. Democracy exists on diversity and therefore opinions can differ. However, as we are respecting, respecting other opinions, we have to narrow the gap in our opinions and make decisions through a rational system based on dialogue and consensus. Conflict and confrontation-based politics, if it continues, we cannot overcome the challenges ahead of us and we cannot move forward into the future. When a reasonable dialogue and compromise is not there, all the difficulties and sufferings will be borne by the people. The National Assembly of this term should look only at the livelihoods of the people, and I hope that this would become a great platform, great practices of politics so that my, uh, so that we can go forward to a better and have a greater leap. Last June 18th, the 2024 National Competitiveness Assessment that was published by IMD, Korea ranked the highest ever, which is 20th. Among the 30, 50 club countries with a per capita income of $30,000 and a population of 50, over 50 million, we ranked second right after the United States. In particular, the finance and labor market changes were reflected and re infrastructure sectors such as science and technology have risen significantly. Export performance in the first half of this year also proves such assessment. Exports in the first half of the year has amounted to 334.8 billion Korean won year on year and it was a 9.1% increase year on year and the import fell 6.5% to $311.7 billion. Exports in the first half of the year were higher than the same period last year. And just a year ago, in the first half of 2023, the trade deficit reached 26 point Three billion, and it turned to a surplus of $23.1 billion in just a year's time, achieving the largest surplus since 2018. Industries such as semiconductors, automobiles, ships, displays, and biohealth, where the government had focused its support, they were in the lead to 
they sleep in our exports. Since it's, on in, since it's inauguration, my government has consistently pursued policies such as the establishment of a private sector-led market economy, fiscal soundness, fostering cutting-edge science and technology, labor, manage, labor management, rule of law, and regulatory reform. And it has proved through this national competitive assessment that the government's direction was not wrong. We must further strengthen the dynamism of the economy and lead it to leap forward beyond such recovery. And we are going to carefully implement the policies so that such assessment and such further leap could be spread to every corner of the people's economy. I hope that all the members of the cabinet will closely monitor the progress of major policies. Today, at the cabinet meeting, we will deliberate on a proposal to reward those who have made significant contribution to overcoming the bir low birth rate in commemoration of the Population Day of June 11th. There are many people who are voluntarily taking the lead in overcoming low birth rates, including religious organizations that are leading campaigns to spread family values and companies that are practicing exemplary work-family balance. And we have citizen who, citizens who we are grateful for who are practicing the sharing while raising eight children. As the president, I would like to express my gratitude to all these organizations and individuals. According to statistics released last week, the number of marriages in April was higher than uh, April last year, increasing by nearly 25 percent, and I'm very glad to hear such news. The low birth rate policy should be pushed forward in a strong manner, and when all citizens come together, I think that this shows that there is a hope that we can overcome this low birth rate phenomenon. The idea that family is a source of happiness when this is widely shared and giving birth is something that everyone should be congratulated upon. I think this will be a culture that we can spread. Yesterday, the announcement of amendment to Government Organization Act and the Framework Act on Low Birth Rate and Aging Society was announced. And we are going to establish a new Ministry of Population Strategy and Planning that will be the control tower to respond to low birth rate, and a minister of political affairs will be newly established to serve as a bridge between the National Assembly and the government. To solve the low birth rate problem, the national emergency, we must establish an all-out response system as soon as possible. I would like to ask the National Assembly for its contribution. Thank you. That was our live coverage of South Korea's 29th Cabinet Meeting of the Year. We'll, we'll bring you more details in our upcoming newscast at noon Korea time. Until then, goodbye.